Hi, and welcome to GeoProducts' technical web series. I am Mike Jotsky. I'm the technical director here at GeoProducts. Feel free to reach out to me at any time for any help you need with any of the projects uh, or products that we produce here. Today, we're going to talk about the difference between GeoCells and GeoGrids. So, starting, GeoGrids are 2D uh, planar material. So basically, uh, they've been used for a long time, and they're flat, and you put gravel on top of it, or some kind of uh, or angular stone. Um, as that stone is loaded, uh, those materials kind of start to spread a little bit, and that engages that, um, it interlocks with the geogrid, and it engages the tensile strength in that geogrid, and does it allow that material to move. Now, because it is only 2D, um, that the, the strength that that um, geogrid provides only translates up to a couple layers of stone above it. Once you get above that, um, you lose a lot of that benefit. So you're still able to have that material spread laterally. So you're still going to get rutting. Um, you're still going to get some improvement, but it's not... Um, um, as great as it is when it's right above that layer. So that's why sometimes um, when you're doing geogrid as your means of improving your subsoil, um, you're going to be doing multiple layers. You're going to do a layer with stone and then another layer of geogrid and some more stone. Uh, you might have two or three different layers in there um, to get to the strength that you need for the application that you're working on. So that's a quick introduction about geogrids. Geo cells are a little bit different, whereas they are uh, an actual three-dimensional hoop, so they can find material more so um, and lock it in place so that you don't get the lateral movement um, with a geo cell as you do with geo grid. Um, and as you load that geo cell, that material can't really move. Um, it is going to push out a little bit on that cell wall, so you're going to have... Um, that cell wall, which is composed of the strength of the wall and the, and the seams, holding that material together. But then as it moves a little bit too, all the cells around it are going to push back onto that main cell, uh, and get, which gives it its passive force. So you, you're getting multiple different um, uh, forces to hold it up. So not only do you have the hoop strength holding it up, but you have the passive forces of all of the other cells around it holding it up which really reduces the, the rutting that you see when you're using GeoCell. Um, and you're able to use pretty much any material in it, whereas on the GeoGrid, you have to have some kind of material that's gonna lock into that, um, that, that, that plane. Um, so you're gonna have to use some kind of bigger rock. Um, can't really use sand in it. Whereas in GeoCell, you can use sand um, and still get a uh, really good performance out of it. So to kind of go over some more of the differences, we're going to go through a couple categories. So um, like I said, the infill on GeoCell, you can pretty much use any type of drain material you want. You can't use clay, but anything other than clay, you can put into it. You can also use topsoil and then seed it so you can make a green parking lot with it. GeoGrid, you're going to have to use some kind of well-graded processed infill like an aggr aggregate uh, to be able to get performance out of it. So confinement. Um, GeoCell, again, um, you know, can pretty much confine anything that's in it, whereas um, GeoGrid will only uh, add support really to the first couple layers of aggregate over top of it, and then it kind of tapers off pretty quickly after that. So environmental impacts of it, and they're both going to, you know, help you utilize less materials when you're building. Um, but because you can use pretty much anything to infill geo cells. Usually you can use any type of local infill. You can even use a lot of the waste material that you're digging off of the, taking off the site and just fill that in the geo cells. So you're reducing your haul cost. Um, where geo grids, you're still gonna have to use that high quality aggregate. So you're gonna have to truck that in, but you're using less of it. So it's still an environmental um, uh, advantage. Uh, installation, you know, they're both about the same um, other than um, a lot of times with the geo grid, you're going to have to use multiple layers, which can add extra time. Where geo cell, usually it's one layer, you're done. Um, really easy to go over soft soft soils, uh, no issues at all. You don't have to worry about trying to stretch it out and getting it nice and perfect. And because of these things, you're going to get the most uh, reduction in the layer thickness that you need 
um, with geo cells as opposed to geo grids. What are the recent studies we did? On the graph on the bottom here, you can see um, we had a control section, which is just six inches of stone, and then we had a six inch um, geo cell. Um, that's the blue line at the bottom, and you can see that there was over 50% reduction in the stress on the subgrade, whereas the geo grid that we installed, um, same application, same testing parameters, um, only reduced it by about mm, 20%. Um, so definitely still an improvement, just not as much as um, a geo cell. Um, so you can kind of see in the picture up top how that geo cell is working. It's spreading that load and, and reducing the really high stresses and reducing it um, to minimal stresses. So those are kind of the quick differences about geo cell and geo grid. Um, but really when it comes down to it, um, we're all trying to build better roads. We're all trying to take care of the environment and we're trying to maximize the environmental impacts um, that we have or maximize, minimize environmental impacts. Um, GSL really gives you a lot of options because you're able to not have to process those, that stone to put into it. You're, you don't have to, um, you know, you can use what's locally there and not have to drive that offsite either. Um, and you're going to use a lot less material to get the same performance. So your next job, consider using GSLs. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us here at GeoProducts. Thanks again.